consumer education, and fourth is holding, safeguarding, and spreading the Dharma and activating of Kyoto Kokoran Muji. First, his birth and meeting his distinct guru. Kenji Rinpoche was born in 1943 in Tibet in a place called Nari near Patong Mountain, behind Gopar Mon Monastery. Rinpoche's father's name was Chaburu Chetan Pasan and his mother's name was Sonam Hama. Rinpoche's parents had three sons, of which Rinpoche was the eldest. Rinpoche's paternal ancestors were renowned for being rich and devoted to Dharma. Unfortunately, their descendants eventually became poor. Until the age of five, Rinpoche's family's life was nomadic and Rinpoche himself helped to look after the grazing sick. When he was six or seven years old, his father became severely sick, and he was bedridden for over a month. One day, suddenly he said, Karmapa Keno, Karmapa Keno, Karmapa Keno, three times, with his, with his speed getting slower and slower with each repetition. He then, the day he passed away. After that, afterwards, the family faced many difficulties, including financial ones, and were barely surviving. When Kenji Rinpoche was nine years old, a wealthy family wanted to adopt him, but he had no interest in living with them. With means, with means being scarce, one day his mother sent him to work for a wealthy family in a village called Bokar Kulki Labori Yak. He worked there for two years, washing yaks, collecting wood, fetching water, and doing many other shorter jobs. He was an honest and sincere worker who helped the family immensely. One day there, some people were talking about Boka Rinpoche. They were saying that day, Boka, Rinpoche, Boka Chukru Rinpoche came, had come back to the monastery after completing some course of his study. Hearing this, Kenji Rinpoche wondered if this Rinpoche was a god or a human being, and he developed a deep wish to meet him. Later, he went to Boka Monastery, stayed there for some months, and then returned back to his home, where he stayed, there, he stayed with his mother for one year. Seeing no essence of beauty in samsara, he thought that it would be wonderful if he had an opportunity to study dharma. After getting permission from his mother, he went to Gopar Monastery. As he approached the monastery, the sun shone in a very beautiful manner. Considering this an auspicious sign, he delighted to approach the general secretary of Boka Rinpoche. Speaking very respectfully, he called the general secretary of Rinpoche and told him that he wished to practice dharma in this life and showed permission to serve the monastery. When, when the general secretary heard this, he was surprised and thought that there was something unique about this child. Perhaps he was a special being. The general secretary gladly accepted him and he joined the monastery where he offered service for some months. Captain Bukharabuchi then cut his hair, gave him the name Lujo Tanyi, and oversaw the beginning of his spiritual education. Second, pleasing and serving his spiritual master. Ever since Kenji Rinpoche met Captain Boka Rinpoche, he served with his spiritual master right up until his passing. And he always did show respectfully and with sincerity. When he was young, he grazed the monastery's animals, brought water and ice in the winter, cleaned Rinpoche's room and more, all voluntarily, without being asked to do so. When the Tibetans came in exile to India, they experienced terrible hardship. There was little to be. They didn't have sales shops, and they had no money to buy basic necessities. During that time, Kenjiro Mitsu did what he could to financially help his teacher. Excuse me, teacher. He was always looking for opportunities to serve his spiritual master. Third, Kenjiro Mitsu consummated his education. From his childhood, Kenjiro Mitsu was very talented and curious with, with an innate intelligence. In 1960, Kenji Rinpoche went to school in Darjeeling, where he learned many general subjects and received many awards for excellence in studies. In 1966, he enrolled in the Central Institute of Higher Tibetan Studies in Varanasi, where he studied all the major Buddhist texts. He was very diligent and dedicated. Day and night, he studied and practiced many aspects of the Buddhist sutras and tantras. Rinpoche practiced many aspects of the Buddhist sutras and tantras, and having listened to, contemplated, and practiced the Kala Chakra Tantra for most of his life. Rinpoche is especially renowned for his study and, and, and understanding of his tantra and is widely recognized as an expert in these teachings. In 1976, at Runtek Monastery in Sikkim, in the presence of His Holiness the Sixteen Paramapa and many other great Rinpoches of Kagyu tradition, there was a great gathering of many qualified Kenpos, and they debated. His Holiness the Sixth Kamaka was very pleased by Kenji Rinpoche's performance in Tibet. 
Over the years, Captain Kenji Rumbuja received many teachings, transmissions, and empowerments from His Holiness the Sixth Kamapa, Captain Gyalcho Rumbuja, Captain Kado Rumbuja, Ramjun Punkyap, and Captain Boka Rumbuja, and from many other great scholars and practitioners of all Buddhist traditions. For holding, safeguarding, and spreading the Dharma and the activity of Captain Boka Rumbuja. After the previous Gokara Rumbuja passed away in 2004, Captain Kenji Rumbuja took the responsibility for soldering all of Captain Gokara Rumbuja's Dharma activities. Kenji Rumbuja ensured that the new monastery building, the Shankwa Kagi Retreat Center, and new school were finished according to Gokara Rumbuja's intentions. In South India, Kenji Rumbuja first oversaw the expansion of Kosam Nolin Gyasha Shetra and later initiated the construction of the new institute Boker opportunity outside of Siliguri. And Rumbuja also laid the plans for the oversaw the development of the new nunnery and institute Dolman Lexi Dugulin in Sikkim, in addition to granting monastic ordination from time to time. Each summer, winter, and autumn, Rumbuja graciously grants teachings, reading transmission, and empowerments to all of our monks and nuns. Requests for teachings and empowerments also often come from Kenbo's, Lamas, and Jungus of Sakya, Gelu, and Nima traditions, which Rinpoche kindly fulfills. Kenji Rinpoche continues to offer teaching to the foreign disciples of East and West in accordance with their wishes and capacities, and also continues to establish more Dharma center for the flourishing of the teachings. One of Kenji Rinpoche's important activities after the passing of previous Boka Rinpoche was his persistent supplication to the 17th Garwa Karmapa to recognize Rinpoche's reincarnation. Kenji Rinpoche then brought Boka Chuchu Rinpoche to the monastery and has overseen his teaching of offering him many common and special teaching, ensuring that Boka Chuchu Rinpoche received the entirety of the transmission. In short, Kenji Rinpoche has ensured that all of Kyabse Boka Rinpoche's wishes and intentions were completely fulfilled. Under Kenji Rinpoche's skillful guidance, the activity of Boka Monastery has increased like the waxing moon and the monastery's activities of learning and practice are flourishing. Kenji Rinpoche has compassionately nurtured monastic and lay disciples, males and females, and the Boka Monastery community has grown to reach nearly thousand in number. Kenji Rinpoche is a genuine Dharma practitioner who has spent his entire life practicing Dharma and spreading it all around the world. This was a brief account of his life. This was a brief account of the life of Kyabse Kenji Ludwig Rinpoche. On this birthday today, all of us disciples, for whom he is our only hope and refuge, request him to remain to guide us until the end of existence. May his life and activity be indestructible like the Vajra, unchanging like the swastika, and ever raised like the Victory Banner. We all make aspirations that Kenji Rinpoche's life be stable and long, and that all of his compassionate and beneficial activity effortlessly spread throughout the ten directions. May the glorious Guru long remain, may all beings feeling space be happy, gathering the accumulation and clearing the veils, may I and every being quickly attain Buddhahood. In all my future lives, may I never be apart from the authentic Gurus and embrace the Dharma's glory, may I perfect the qualities of all the thoughts and labels, and may I swiftly realize the state of Vajratara. Happy birthday, Kenji Rinpoche Thank you.